All right, so hi everyone. I uh, hope you all had a nice lunch. Uh, so we're excited to be here today to present to you on the Meta Open Rack Frame V3 specification, also known as uh, ORV3. Uh, so I'm Julia, I'm a mechanical engineer at Meta. And I'm Indra Subramaniam, uh, engineering manager at Twitter. Hi. Yeah. And um, this specification has been a collaborative effort between uh, Meta and Ritual. So what is the Meta version of the OR, of ORV3? Uh, so this is the, a detailed uh, frame design that's, based, that's an implementation of the option one, which is outlined in the ORV3 base specification. Um, this, this builds upon the foundation of the ORV2 rack frame. And it's one of the, the fundamental building blocks um, for the open compute ecosystem. So that's because it provides, you know, like the structure, the power that you need in order to have interoperability um, of open rack based IT systems. So next I'll cover some of the, um, the what the differences are between open rack v2 and open rack v3. Um, so in terms of power, both support 48 volts DC. Um, and one of the improvements in the ORV3 rack is that the power shelf has the flexibility to be located in any of the rack slots within the, the height of the rack. Um, so this helps to increase flexibility um, in where you want to place your power shelf. And in ORV3, we've moved to completely toolless rack rails, uh, so no screws or hardware required. This makes it a lot more convenient and very easy for assembly and disassembly of the rack rails. In terms of RU and OU gear support, so ORV3 does support RU gear. And in terms of OU gear support, um, it's an increase in, it's a taller rack, so there's an increase of four OU, so it's total 44 OU uh, slots. And in the image in red, you can see the uh, cable tray manager. So RV3 offers a modular rack cabling solution. So those cable tray managers are removable and customi customizable based on your needs. And there's a cross brace as well that provides stiffening and extra structure for the rack frame. So that, that cross brace is movable. Um, so that also provides uh, extra flexibility in how you want to configure your IT gear rack so it doesn't have, because it doesn't have to be locked into a specific OU slot. Uh, overall rack height, as I mentioned, it is taller. So it's total about 76 mm taller than ORV2 rack. Uh, maximum payload, that's the same as ORV2 rack at 1400 kg. Uh, so next I'll cover some of the frame fundamentals. Um, so size, it's 2,286 mm in height, 600 mm in width, and 1,098 mm in uh, depth. And as I mentioned, maximum payload for the rack, it's rated for 1400 kg. If you want to attach a rear door to the, the back side of the rack, uh, so that the rack is rated for a maximum rear door weight of 150 kg. And as you can see in the image, the direction of airflow for the rack is going from the front to the rear of the rack. Um, it supports 44 OU total and 47 RU total. And in terms of operating conditions, uh, it's rated for 10 degrees C to 60 degrees C in temperature and uh, up to 85% max humidity, minimum 5 degrees C dew point. And it's not covered in the spec right now, uh, but BlindMate liquid cooling support with ORV3 rack will be covered as part of a future update. There are other talks going on at the conference covering BlindMate, so I encourage all of you to go check those out as well. Um, and then I'll cover some of the uh, challenges that have been worked on since the previous update and what some of the improvements have been in this update. So first off is uh, improvement on tolerancing and being able to meet process capability for the rack frame. So this has been resolved with uh, improvements to welding jigs, welding process optimization, a couple of minor design changes. 
Um, and then the second one is uh, going back to those toolless rack rails, which have a snap-in latch feature. Uh, so th that snap-in latch feature, the design has been improved uh, to increase the retention force of it so that we can meet minimum pull-out force requirement of 400 newtons. And you can see in the picture an example of what that pull-out force is like uh, on those rack rails. Because we want to make sure if you have IT gear sitting on those rails and you want to pull it out, um, the rails won't, won't come with it. And now I'll hand it over to Indro. Okay, thank you, Julia. So in this slide, I will walk through the internal key, um, key interface. So right at the middle, you can see the cross-section of the frame uh, <coughs> along with the shelf. So, um, so th as Julia said, the shelf kit is fit with the toolless. So right at the rear there, you can see how the the shelf kit is interfaced with the vertical, and at the front, how that hooks into the uh, the front of the vertical as well. So the way it's designed uh, during the deployment of the cycle, uh, so that s rails or server won't come loose. Meanwhile, in the vertical, you can see there are some square cutouts. Those are R U and O U um, square cutouts to support the shelf. Mean, uh, meanwhile, the vertical is defined to designed to support the the high tolerance requirement as well. Moving to the next slide, so <coughs> as I explained, it's a toolless shelf. So compared to V2, V2 had a um, shelf kit fixed with a screw. So we we had went through a quite a lot of challenge to get through that testing. So we had to make sure that the design is robust to support robust to support the shelf. So we had uh, quite a lot of dynamic testing and also the pull test uh, to qualify the the, the rails. Meanwhile, we understand the community might use the tugger to move the rack to A to B. So we have gone through a quite a lot of testing to make sure the frame is robust so it doesn't deform uh, during your deployment. Moving to the next slide, there's a quick animation to show how the, the, um, the shelf kits fit to the rack there. Uh, so we do have two different shelf kits. One is the IT shelf kit and the other one is the power shelf. Uh, power shelf kit, so the difference between those two are the uh, power shelf is slightly shorter than the IT shelf. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so I just walked through the internal interface. I'm gonna go through now the external interface. So right at the middle, you can see the isometric with the rack, rack and the on the right-hand side, you have the, the front, uh, front or the rear base um, the detail view there. So we got some M8 uh, features there. So typically we can put the front door or rear door cooling unit there. And meanwhile, if the community wanted to add any other accessories, you're welcome to do. Uh, in the side, we have M12 uh, features there, uh, not set features. So we use for the, typically for the stabilizer. And meanwhile, if the community wants to use for any other accessories, please welcome. So. <coughs> So I did speak about this side where we had to develop a, a stabilizer kit. Obviously, as Julia mentioned, this rack is slightly taller and dif dif uh, depends on the community's configuration. The center of gra gravity might be slightly will be different. So we had to come up with a, a stabilizer kit which supports the additional stability and also this will qualify to the new UL system as well. If anybody wants to try this in retail booth, we got one of the set available. Uh, if you come along there, I can walk through in more detail as well. Um, <coughs> in this slide, I'm going to quickly go through the cable management. As you all know, or on V2, the cable management is part of the vertical, which is welded to the frame. So what we have done is we went and go through a little bit detail in the V3 development, and we made it the cable manager as the it's like assemble component. So in the data center or in the bait situation, if you wanted to uh, pass through cable from one rack to another rack, even when you fit the door, you can do that by removing the cable manager. Meanwhile, if the community want to change the feature of the, or the, the cutouts of the cable manager, which can be designed and replaced as well. So we have one OU to four U shelf kits. So I know community might uh, not use all the shelf position on all the time, so you might have some empty space. So what we have done is we have developed air containment blanks, which is a toolless 
so literally sits on the, the shelf kit, which will help to increase the airflow efficiency. So as Julia mentioned, this is taller rack, so we had to make sure the rack if airflow efficiency is much better than the, the V2. So right at the, the right hand side of the picture, so you can see the complete, the components which are highlighted, which are the, uh, the air containment components. So we have a bracket at the top and the bottom. Meanwhile, we got some strips vertically and we got one additional strips at the front as well. These all components are added to increase the um, airflow efficiency. So you might uh, know that on V2, we have a cross member which is welded. Um, I, uh, we do understand that community might have went through, because it's a fixed position, it's difficult to configure around. So when we developed the V3, what we have done is we didn't go for the welded, we replaced with an assembled component. So as a standard, we'll fit it in 23 OU, but we have the flexibility to change from 18 OU to 27 OU. So this will give additional support uh, for the configuration. Meanwhile, anything less than 800 kilogram, you can completely remove the cross brace, which is an additional bonus. Finally, the, all the CAD file specification drawings are available in the link. Please welcome to download and uh, get familiarized. We do have a rack and power page. So uh, I know you guys have seen the ORV3 rack. If you want to add any features or anything, or as Steve mentioned, if you're looking for a different uh, uh, additional features, kits, anything, please welcome to join the page or send an email to us. We will consider in the future development. Okay. Thank you. Oh, any questions? I think, yeah, please go to the, the microphone with any questions. Yeah, just curious with all the toolless requirements and using friction to hold, you know, shelves in, what's the seismic requirements and are we compatible? It's a very good question. So seismic is depends on the, uh, as a standard product for Twilio, we don't have one. But if you have uh, any requirement, again, as I said, if you put it to the forum, we can consider it and develop, develop the kit for you guys. But it's based on the requirement. We can work on that, yeah. Good question. Uh, why did you use a cuboid rather than just like a blanking plate? Was there some design goal for that? You mean the self containment? You mean uh, the air air yeah. air containment uh, panel? Yeah. Why uh, didn't you just use a plate? Why did you use that whole filler cube? Yeah, I think um, both options could work depending on on your application. I think um, that that was the the path we ch we chose to to go. Um, uh, what we use in other applications, and I think costs and and whatnot as well. If you really consider, so if you have a some sort of feature, so you are adding costs, you're locking into the framework, whereas this is literally sits on the shelf. So it's mainly thinking about the cost. Uh, that is the reason behind, one of the reasons behind. It's lower, lower cost. Yeah. Thank you. I think it, it also covers the sides because it, it, the box goes all the way to the, the back. And what's the, is there some kind of airflow impact by having the sides covered or? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, in some cases we do want to, to have the, because uh, I think if you look at the RV3 rack, the, the side is has a gap there between the vertical members. So, yeah, in some cases we do want that blocked as well. Okay, thank, thank you, you guys. No more questions. And I think as Indro mentioned, uh, the Rital booth has uh, the rack and some of the accessories like the stabilizers if anyone wants to check it out.